Hi, good morning, and welcome, welcome to the first day of Cisco Live. We're very happy to have you here. Um, so my name is Story Deweese, and I'm a technical marketing engineer here at um, Cisco Systems. And today we're going to talk about Terraform, and specifically how we can use Terraform with Cisco iOS XE. So before we get into the presentation, know that you can use the Cisco Events app, and you can actually get in the WebEx space for this particular session. So I'm in this space as well as some of my colleagues, and we're happy to answer any questions that you may have during or after the session so we can stay engaged this way. So here's our agenda for today. We have an introduction to Terraform, so what is the Terraform tooling? Then we'll talk about using the iOS XE Terraform provider, which was released uh, last year. And then we'll move on into some demos, some use cases of how we can actually use this new provider. And finally, we'll wrap up with some resources. So let's get started. First of all, does anyone here use Terraform today? I see a few hands. OK, awesome, awesome. So Terraform is an open source infrastructure as code cloud native tooling. So that's a lot of words. Let's break it down. What does that actually mean? So Terraform allows us to interface with a lot of different cloud resources. And there are a lot of Terraform providers, Terraform resources that help us use different technologies together, right? bringing things together. Our Terraform provider with iOS XE is built against the RESTConf API. Does anyone use RESTConf today? RESTConf for programmability. I see zero hands. OK, so one hand? Nice. A couple of you. A couple of you. OK. <laughs> a couple of uh, RESTConf users out there. So if you don't use RESTConf today, no worries. We'll learn about it more together. So. Um, <clears throat> With programmability, we have different APIs for iOS XE. We work with NetConf, RESTConf, or GNMI. So again, I'm zeroing in on RESTConf because that's what we'll be talking about with Terraform. So a RESTConf is uh, the protocol that we're actually going to be, or sorry, the operation that we'll be using. <clears throat> and so if you use REST APIs in any other sense, you may be familiar with uh, the Put is essentially the way that we create things, or we can get information. So this is typically used in uh, web-related applications. So now let's get a little bit deeper into the Terraform terminology. What are all of these terms that we'll be using? So first of all, I mentioned that we have a provider. And so our provider has a few different resource definitions, but let's get into it. First, we have an execution plan file. And so this is where we store everything that we're going to be doing in Terraform, right? <clears throat> All of it will be in a file or multiple files. And this is written in HashiCorp configuration language, or HCL. And if you're familiar with JSON, it's pretty much the same formatting, but we have a .tf extension instead of .json. So here's an example of what this could look like. <clears throat> Here we have a lot of different uh, things going on in our execution plan file, so let's break it down. First of all, we have a provider. And of course, we're going to be using the iOS XE provider because that's what we're all here to talk about today. So we're using our iOS XE provider and highlighted in this blue box, we are actually adding our device information. So which device are we going to interface against in this example? So here we're working with an iOS XE, an enterprise networking switch, and we have the credentials that are set. So this is not best practice, right? The reason that we're showing it here today is to see, OK, here are the credentials. Here's where you put all the information. But Terraform is really cool in that you can abstract away this information into different variables, different files. So you're not just going to have your credentials right here in the file itself. Next, we have, OK, so we have our provider. We have our credentials. We know what device we're going to use. We move on to our resources. So within the iOS XE provider, anything that you can do with RESTConf, you can also do with Terraform. So let's uh, take an example. Here in these two green boxes, we have two different resources. 
And you can think of a resource as essentially a feature, right? Or something that you want to do with um, an iOS XE device, right? So in this case, first, we're going to create a new VLAN. So this VLAN 511 doesn't exist on the device, or maybe it does, but we're going to create it whether or not it exists. We'll be putting um, this operation onto our device. Afterwards, we have a get VLAN. So this get will actually return us all of the VLANs that are currently on our device. So these are the two operations, essentially, that we're doing. First, a put to create something new, and then a get to receive that to make sure that it's working as expected. So here's how we can go ahead and get started with Terraform. So there are a few steps here. First, we need to make sure that RESTConf is configured because, again, Terraform in this implementation is built against the RESTConf API. So that means that we need to have RESTConf enabled on our device to be able to use Terraform. So you can think of Terraform as essentially one level above the operational layer of you know, NetConf, RESTConf, GNMI. Um, Terraform is actually leveraging just RESTConf here. So on our device or wherever we're going to be running Terraform, this is probably a virtual machine or maybe a device in your network itself, you need to have Terraform installed. And this is from uh, HashiCorp. So you can do, for example, the apt install Terraform, get all set up and ready to go. We also have a GitHub page. So you can clone down this to see all the different resources that we have within this iOS XE provider. So once you have this repository, we have tons of examples and tutorials within the GitHub repository that you can look at to actually start leveraging this Terraform provider. So once you've figured out what exactly you want to do, maybe you want to get information from your device using Terraform, maybe you want to apply certain configs, you can do that um, and then go ahead and run apply this to your device to see what changes or what information you're getting back from your device. So next I'll move into a use case scenario. So in this case, we're trying to talk about why is Terraform important? Why would we actually want to use it? So in this use case, we're talking about crypto IPsec. And so here's the typical workflow of you as the user of Terraform, how you would go about getting started. First, you're going to apply your Terraform file. OK, so we have our Terraform file. We know what it's going to do. It's going to go out and configure an IPsec tunnel. So once we apply this, that invokes the Terraform provider and deploys that to the various infrastructure. So the first thing that we can do is create all of the configurations on our device. So for crypto IPsec, two main things. We need the crypto, and we need the tunnel that we're actually going to build, or one end of the tunnel, the one that's on the device itself. Next, we have all of the resources that are on the other side of the tunnel. So this could be in the cloud. For example, if we were to use, say, Google Cloud Platform, Microsoft Azure, or AWS, that could be the other end of our IPsec tunnel. So this will allow our device to talk directly to those cloud resources in a secure way. And we can do this on the recently released 9300X switch. So now let's go through what this can actually look like. So here is our Terraform file. And we see that we're going to configure two main things. First, the crypto. Then as we're moving down the file, we're also configuring the tunnel itself, the end that's on our device. <clears throat> so now that we've reviewed the file, we can go ahead and see if we can ping or reach this resource. So here we're trying to reach an IP address that is corresponding to a specific website. And we can see here the pings are not going through. We can't access it because the tunnel itself is not up yet, right? We're in the process of creating it, or we will create it once we apply this Terraform file. So moving back, we're going to actually configure or apply uh, this Terraform file to our device. 
So when we run the Terraform apply, and in this case we can use an auto approve optional flag or we can go ahead and say yes, we see that we have a lot of logs. Stuff is happening on our device. We're actually going in and configuring it. So now we can check and make sure that the tunnel is actually up and active. So we're doing the verification here. But we're not going to stop it there. We actually want to see, OK, now that the tunnel is up, can we actually ping this IP address? Can we reach it? And so once we see that the pings are working, we can also see, yes, when we go to this IP address, we can now reach the cloud resource. So moving on to our evolution of the Terraform provider. This is still relatively new in uh, the realm of Cisco. So for the iOS XE provider, this was released in March of 22. So it's not quite a year old yet. And we released an imperative Terraform provider. So again, this means that anything you can do with RESTConf, you can also do with Terraform. So that was phase one that happened back in March. And next, we're creating these different declarative uh, providers. So this is in phase two. We're in this blue phase right now. So creating these Terraform providers in August or summer of last year, we created a BGP eVPN provider. So if you've ever configured BGP eVPN, you know there are a ton of CLIs that you need to go through to actually make this possible. So instead of remembering all of the CLIs, going out and configuring everything by hand, which is, let's face it, prone to human error, instead, we can use this Terraform provider. And it's a much easier way where you can go in and define your spine, your leafs, your border, and go ahead and configure this within your network. Then later last year in October, we created an app hosting provider. So if you're unfamiliar with app hosting, basically the concept is you can run an application directly on your device itself. So you don't need an external, you don't need SSD, anything like that. Instead, you can run usually a Docker container on your uh, switch, and it can host an application. So we have some examples of what you can do. Say you want to use Thousand Eyes. You can run that directly on your switch. But if you're not familiar with the process of how to get it set up, or you aren't quite sure what to do to get started, you can actually use Terraform to deploy Thousand Eyes on your switch itself. So that's the solution that we've provided with this additional Terraform provider built again against the imperative provider that was initially released. Next, we're in the works right now for a model-driven telemetry provider. So this means that, say you want to get telemetry from your device, you want to get maybe regularly CPU data to see how your device is doing, right? You want to look at some device health. You can get this information from your device and actually configure the subscription to get that data from your device on a regular basis, all using this new Terraform provider, which is not released yet, coming soon. And as well, we have phase three. So phase three is where I'm looking to all of you here today. If there are any features that you're particularly interested in using Terraform for, or using Terraform to, say, configure something special, please let me know or let us know in the WebEx space for this session, because we'll be happy to focus on those features and prioritize those first. We want to make sure that this provider is as useful as it can be to you um, as soon as it can be. So next, I would like to talk about the blogs and resources. So as we're at DevNet, there are tons and tons of resources out there and available to you. So we have blogs on how this works, talking about a similar use case to what we've described today. We also have some YouTube videos. We have another WebEx space specific to the Terraform provider. So anything that you want to ask about, maybe you get started with the Terraform provider later today, and you say, hey, I don't understand how this works. No worries. You can ask us there, and we'll get you the support that you need. So you can also use the QR code to join this space. Next, I want to take a minute to talk about the other sessions that are happening 
this week at Cisco Live, all related to programmability and automation. So today's session has been about Terraform and the new iOS XE provider. We also have sessions covering programmability, automation, and telemetry with iOS XE. So feel free to check out this QR code, this blog that describes all the sessions that are happening later this week, as well as sessions that have happened at previous Cisco Live. So we have the on-demand recordings, and all of those are pulled out for you so that you can understand and continue to learn and grow on your programmability and automation journey. I encourage you all to go into the WebEx events app, and there you can complete a session survey and um, give us feedback, right? I want to make these sessions as useful and informative to you as they can be. So we take this feedback very seriously. Please let us know how we can make these sessions best for you. There are tons of ways that you can continue your education as well, not only this week, but also in the future and um, <clears throat> as well using the Cisco Live on-demand sessions. So with that, I would like to say thank you for attending the session and please come up and chat with me afterwards if you'd like to talk more about Terraform. Thank you.